Yes, sir. It's that time of week again. It's the Backmarkers F1 Show Power Rankings post Japanese Grand Prix Round 17. Chris Cato alongside Shaker Barty to bring you the rankings for this week. Some movement, actually. We have a new number one this week. No new entries, however, but we got a lot of drivers going up and down. It's been Japanese Grand Prix was pretty topsy turvy. So uh, we've got some movement going on. So let's get right into it. And we're going to start off, as usual, with the number 10 spot, a driver that dropped down this week, and that's McLaren's Lando Norris. Realize I had my mic nowhere (laughs) close to me. My bad. Um, (laughs) Yes, he dropped down three positions this week. Um, Again, no, uh, he didn't do anything wrong. Uh, We talked about it in our, uh, in our, uh, oh my God, I can't talk right now. (laughs) Uh, We talked about it in our Japan review. Um, but yeah, no, no fault of his own. The, uh, there was other drivers on the grid that unfortunately performed a little bit better than him, had yep. a better drive. It's the only reason he drops down. He's been a consistent driver all season, and I still don't see him falling off our top 10. Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if this is wood, but... I don't know it is either, if it is it either. Knock on um, wood. But yeah, I, I don't see him falling off, so he, he, he's had a consistent drive all season, so... Agreed. Three points finishes in the last five, and had it not been for a failure in Belgium and and you know bad pit stops here or there, yeah, it probably would be higher. Yeah. So that means in number nine, a driver that got bumped up this season, and honestly, I I feel like we should even put Perez. Well, number nine we have Sergio Perez, but he should be number one just because he crashed out of the race, but somehow managed to stay in the top ten. Yeah. <laughs> I think that deserves number one right there. <laughs> So good on the Mexican driver for that. But he's had a really good run of form. We were talking about Racing Point in our Japanese recap podcast, Mm -hmm. which you can find down below as well. Um, Two P7 finishes and a P6 out in the last five. And and he did outscore Lando um, in the last five races too, um, which is another factor that we've included. Good in qualifying. You know, Japanese Grand Prix qualifying wasn't that good for him, but I think that eventually in the race, he did an excellent job. And I think that he's done very, very well in the last five races, which is why he's number nine. And in a good time, too. He's about to go to his home Grand Prix for the next race. Yeah. Um, you know, he needed a, needed a little boost before he goes into Mexico because he, he he had a DNF last year at Mexico, which was unfortunate. Um, so I'm hoping to see a lot from, from Sergio Perez uh, for the upcoming Grand Prix. Yep. Viva Sergio. Um, so moving on into P8 then, another driver that moved up this week because of the shift is Nico Hulkenberg and Renault's Nico Hulkenberg. Yeah, and it's funny because he was up in eighth spot two weeks ago in our review and he dropped down to ninth position. Now he's back up to eighth. That's right. And Renault has had a an okay run of form. I mean, Hulkenberg has been outpacing his teammate Daniel Ricciardo in the last five. J- Japanese Grand Prix was his fifth straight uh, race in the points. Obviously, he's outscored his teammate in those last five races, which is one of the reasons why Daniel Ricciardo hasn't made an appearance yet in our top 10. Yeah, I mean, uh, next, depending on his next one or two races go, he might make an appearance in, the, in our uh, top 10. So. Yeah, unfortunately, Hulkenberg's still without a drive for 2020, so maybe that's somewhat alleviated the pressure for him and, and why he's putting in these good results. Yeah. But Lord knows Renault needs him. So <laughs> Nico Hulkenberg in eighth this week in our list. And then P7, Sebastian Vettel. Uh, up one spot, slowly climbing his way up. Slowly. You notice that we haven't shot him directly up into the top three, as yeah. some might think. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, honestly, the reason is because I think he might have been higher had he not had the jump start in this race. For sure. You know, we have to be honest, and that jump start was a mistake. It was another lapse in focus from from the four-time world champion. And regardless of that, though, he moves at that one spot because he did get the pole position in Suzuka. Obviously, the podium to follow it. So his last five races, he's got the win, he's got a pole, and he's got a podium. And obviously, the bad luck in Russia, had that not happened, yeah. probably would have been in our top five by now. But after all the mistakes that he made in Monza and earlier in the summer break, he's starting to climb back up into the top five of mm-hmm. our rankings. Um, not there quite yet, so we'll see what he does in Mexico. But uh, I think seventh is where we decided for him. Yeah, it honestly depends on how Max does. That too? Yeah, because uh, I think some Dutch fans will be disappointed where Max is this <laughs> yeah. week. Yeah. Um, so next up is number six, uh, Carlos Sainz, which I believe he stays the same. But yes, Carlos Sainz, he's fantastic uh, drive all season. Um, and he's 
I think after his first two or three races coming back from the summer break w- weren't too fantastic. I yeah. think he DNF for the first two, sorry. And you know, since that, since then, he's been just consistent being in that fifth position uh, in the race, uh, just kind of keeping himself between the top four and, you know, and the rest of the best of the rest. So like, fantastic drive from Carlos Sainz. Could, you could say he could be in the fifth position. Possibly. Which he, which he is not. Um, which is actually Max Verstappen. Yeah, that's in right. Fifth position. What is that? Three places that he drops or yeah, two? Two. He two. He was in third position uh, last week, and we kind of discussed this one right before we went on. Um, if we should drop him one more spot because Carlos Sainz has had better consistent finishes in the last five, but Max has had better qualifying. He's had a better track position in his other races. Um, you know, this race wasn't as really his fault. He would have still been in there and I'm sure he would have been fighting with Alex Albon for that fourth position, uh, in the race. If, if, you know, what, uh, if the incident didn't happen in the first lap. So, yep. yeah. And I mean, science and Verstappen sort of had similar luck, you know, the DNF, yeah. uh, in, in Belgium and then one for Italy, obviously Max starts at the back of the grid in Italy and he's only got one podium in the last five races in, yeah. He has to drop down in our rankings because he's gone a little bit cold. Now, some of that has been his fault. Some of it hasn't, obviously, with engine penalties gearing up for this big weekend in Japan, and then it all just came undone in lap one. So because of the drivers that eventually leapfrogged him, they did better, and Verstappen just hasn't been at that same level that, you know, he was number one not too many weeks ago on our list. Consistently for like four or five weeks, I want to say. so. Yep, for sure. So that's one of the reasons why we had to drop him down because the results just haven't been there for him collectively as a whole yeah so that means the one driver that did move up this week was our race winner mr valtteri bottas and liking at looking at his last five races he's got one win three podiums he out qualified lewis hamilton his teammate here in suzuka which is a pretty impressive feat to do and it's another driver again he was around i think six last week and we've always said about this about Valtteri. He's kind of that consistent driver that just does enough to keep himself inside the list, but doesn't really jump out at you. But this race victory in Japan was a little bit unexpected. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, he lo- he was a bit lucky with how Vettel started his race, but getting up into his third win of the season, the way he controlled the race in the end, I, I think is why he moved up two spots. And again, like we said, the bad luck that Verstappen has, the lack of performances that he's had, just bumped him up. Yeah. So getting into the podium places, and I'm happy that this driver is in third place. Yeah, I mean, he's, since the summer break, all he's done is just jump up positions. Um, got his best performance ever in F1. Uh, we have, of course, we are, of course, talking about Alex Albon. Um, you know, what a magnificent race that he had. Some great overtakes, you know, kept himself up there with uh, Max Verstappen dropping out of the race in the first lap. And just, you know, did whatever he could to get get that best position in this race and in all of his other races beforehand. I think in um, Russia, he was P5. Yeah. Uh, before that, he was also P5. So he's just, he's been consistent since he's got in, in that new Red Bull car. And he might even take it over Pierre Gasly now, I want to say. He probably has yeah. taken it over Pierre Gasly. Yeah, I mean, that seat is his to lose now. And he's done a good job since coming into that seat. Five straight top six finishes. Like you mentioned, P4 in Japan mm-hmm. was the best of his career. Possibly could have had a podium had Vettel maybe gotten a penalty, but he's done, I think, just enough to get him that seat because he's been consistent. He even matched Max Verstappen in qualifying to the thousands of a second, and I think that's the critical part there. Pierre Gasly was nowhere near yeah. uh, Max Verstappen in qualifying when he was at Red Bull. And Alex Albon in you know, his, his fifth, sixth race with Red Bull now to be able to match Max at a difficult circuit at a circuit. That's the first time driving there too, as a rookie in F1, uh, I think need that needs to be mentioned as well. Really, really impressive from Albon. And I I would agree. I think he's done enough to get that seat for 2020. Yeah. His one fault being in this race with that incident with Lando Norris, we mentioned earlier on. Again, no no fault to his races, no issues with his racing style at all. He's aggressive where he needs to be. He's defensive when he needs to be. So, mm-hmm. yeah, fantastic racer who stepped into that Red Bull seat. That means that in P2, we got a new number one this week because this driver has bumped down. Yeah, because a little of, bit of a shuffle. 
Nothing huge. Yeah, maybe. not huge, but Mr. Charles Leclerc is in second position, and obviously we, we bumped him down because of the incident that he had with Max Verstappen. You know, we talked about this in our recap, the fact that he stayed out with the damage wing that could yeah. have led to a, a lot more serious of an incident with Hamilton behind him. Um, you know, we, we talked about in our recap podcast that he was to blame for the accident with Max Verstappen, and that is why he bumped down a place. He's had a rough kind of two, three races yeah. now, obviously with the whole team orders incident in, in Singapore and also in Russia, and in Russia even he finished third position, but he did enough to kind of keep that number one spot because him and Lewis sort of had a similar race, but obviously that reveals our new number one for this week post-Japan, which is Lewis Hamilton, and... I look at Leclerc, he's got two wins, he's got four poles in the last five, versus Lewis Hamilton, who's got the one win and three podiums in the last five, but he is the points leader in the last yeah. five races. And I also think that Leclerc's big mistake in Japan bumps him down for me, yeah. and, and for us, and that's why we gave him uh, number two this week. Yeah, I mean, and Lewis Hamilton's kind of just confirmed himself, you know, a top three position in this championship. I mean, we feel like he's pretty much taking it, getting a sixth championship overall, but, you know, it's still very tight between him and Valtteri. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes and, you know, where our power rankings end up at the end of the season with only four more races to go. Good list heading into Mexico. we only got four more of these to go until our, obviously, big list at the end of the year, which is the power rankings for the 2019 season. But for now, that will do it for us on this episode of the Power Rankings. Be sure to check out our Japanese Grand Prix review podcast, which is linked in this video and also in our playlist on our channel. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. We thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you next week after the Mexican Grand Prix. Thanks.